I've caused myself to an injury look from doing that thumbnail. Look at that. <sighs> Book problems. I know that this is going to sound like a total justification or an attempt at a justification for why I'm doing yet another book haul but honestly I have to tell you this because well because I don't want anyone to call me out on the fact that I said I was buying no more books and I definitely don't want James to call me out on this because I know that he's gonna sit and watch this and then be like I knew that you were buying books when you said that you weren't so basically what happened was that at the start of the year I sat down and pre-ordered a number of books that were coming out in 2018 that I was really really excited about and they were scattered throughout the year but somehow four of them have come this month so one I definitely knew was being released in March but one was due to be released in April one was due to be released in May and one was due to be released in August and yet somehow they all arrived this month so um, that's four books right there and then it was middle grade March so there were books that I wanted to buy so I could read them for that. I got sent a couple by publishers and the rest just kind of happened so um, hi everyone my name is Jess if you aren't familiar with my channel welcome back if you are. Today's video is going to be an accidental book haul so let's just jump straight in. Okay so the first book I'm going to talk about is Inside Out and Back Again and I'm not going to attempt to say this author's name but if I can get my camera to focus it's right here. So I have already read this book because I bought it for middle grade March. This is a book told in free verse which is a style of writing that I'm not massively familiar with but I definitely enjoyed it. It also makes the book super short because each page pretty much looks like that. So this is the story of a 10 year old Vietnamese girl who has to flee from Vietnam with her family after the Vietnam War and they end up in America and it's basically about her trying to adjust to her new life in America, trying to understand why they had to move, why they had to leave their home and the fact that she meets with a lot of discrimination when she gets to America and it is just a beautiful story um, which actually I discovered at the end was based on a lot of experiences that the author had personally so it's just a really wonderful story and I will talk more about it in my March wrap up but definitely one I would recommend. Then we have Nevermore by Jessica Townsend. This is a book I picked up after Molly from Molly Reads recommended it and I'll link her channel in the description box if you want to hop over there. This is again a middle grade book about a young girl who is basically blamed for everything that goes wrong and on her 13th birthday she knows, I think she knows, that she's going to die and then on the eve of her 13th birthday she swept away to a magical world and basically told that if she wins these trials or if she completes these trials she can be inducted into inducted inducted is that a word is that the right word um basically she can become part of a magical society and molly absolutely raves about this book um and i know that a number of other people have read it and adored it as well so this one i'm i haven't read yet but i'm definitely looking forward to picking up and then the final middle grade book that i picked up is one that i have read and absolutely adored so i will try to keep this really brief because i could just go on and on about this book and that is the girl who drank the moon by kelly barnhill again middle grade this is about a witch who lives in a forest and every year the village on one side of the forest leaves their baby in sacrifice to the witch in the hope that she won't then come and punish them but this witch is actually not a bad witch and she takes the child she rescues them and she takes them across to the other side of the forest and places them with families and they are known as star children because as she does this she feeds them starlight and then one year she accidentally feeds one of the babies moonlight and in magics them and so decides to keep the child she names the child Luna and decides to keep the child and this is just a gorgeous whimsical magical story that any child in middle grade and any adult will just surely fall in love with. I absolutely adored it. It is so beautifully written. It is so whimsical. I just, ah, I just loved it and I can just talk and talk and talk about this book but I won't. It's just, yeah, if you want a really magical middle grade book then I would definitely recommend this one. Okay, now onto the books which I pre-ordered and which arrived quite unexpectedly. So the first one I have is Given to the Sea by Mindy McGuinness and I'm gonna be honest, 
I think that I picked this book up after seeing it in a NetGalley um, Books of the Month email. But since then, I've read a number of reviews on Amazon and Goodreads and it hasn't scored that highly, so I'm a bit dubious about it. But I'll just read you the really short blurb on the back. So it says, Kings and queens rise and fall, loyalties collide and romance blooms as the sea rises relentlessly. So this is the first book in a duology and I was just really intrigued by the premise. I thought that it sounded really interesting and really different, but the reviews do seem to all agree that it's quite a confusing book to read so I'm now not too sure about this so if you've read this and enjoyed it then do let me know because I'm actually a bit dubious about picking this one up now and um yeah I do I think it sounds really really intriguing but yeah I'm not sure now okay then we have Assassin's Fate by Robin Hobb this is the third and final book in Robin Hobb's latest trilogy Fitz and the Fool and I read the first one and then I own the second one and I ordered the third one but I have not read the second and third one because and if you have been around on my channel for a while you will know that I absolutely adore Robin Hobb but in particular her books featuring Fitz and the Fool because there have been a number of different trilogies and I have loved every single one of them and the fact that this is her final ever trilogy featuring Fitz and the Fool is just so heartbreaking to me and I have heard a number of people say that she concludes this trilogy in the best possible way and that nothing is left unfinished and that it's just a really gratifying conclusion to the trilogy and to the story of Fitz and the Fool but I just um I just think that I'm going to be completely devastated when it finishes. I remember when I read the final book in the first trilogy, which is the Farseer trilogy, and this is a total tangent, by the way, but I remember reading it and finishing it and crying because there was no, there weren't any more books out at the time and I had just been completely caught up in the story and I just was bereft when it finished and so I just don't know how I'm going to be with the end of this book knowing as I do now that there are no more books coming out with Fitz and the Fool in them so yes I definitely want to read it as with all Robin Hobbs books this is an absolute chunker the second one is a chunk of a book as well so I, I don't know when I'm going to read them and part of me is desperate to jump back into the world but there is another part of me that is also really hesitant because I don't want it to be over but anyway I own the book as always it's absolutely stunning I just I'm in love with the cover I can't wait to have it on my shelves um I am looking forward to reading it I just also think that it's gonna make me cry the next book I have is Flame in the Mist by Renee Adier and again gorgeous cover envy now I bought this because I believe that it is a Mulan retelling and Mulan is my all-time favorite favorite Disney movie I cannot wait for the live action film to come out I just am in love with the whole storyline um, and I think that this is a retelling so I don't know much more about it than that I literally ordered it for that premise alone um, but yeah again if you've read it and enjoyed it do let me know and then the final pre-order book that I have is Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor again let's just admire the beautiful cover a lot of the covers that I seem to have at the moment have these gold flecks on them and I just think that it's so pretty so this is a fantasy book about a young boy called Laszlo Strange who as for as long as he can remember has been obsessed with a lost city called Weep and then one day he is given the opportunity to go with a group of explorers and find this city and that is literally all I know. I have not read any of Lainey Taylor's other work. I really, really want to read her other trilogy, but I've also heard amazing things about this book. And I'm actually planning on buddy reading this in April with Julie from A Girl and a Book. Again, I will link her channel down below. And I'm very, very excited because I've heard great things about this and I've heard wonderful things about Lainey Taylor's writing in general. So I'm just really excited to jump into a world that she has created and see what I think. Okay, moving on to some books that I bought for myself just because I wanted them. First up, we have Fingers in the Sparkle Jar, a memoir by Chris Packham. Chris Packham is well known here in the UK. He does a lot of television programs featuring wildlife, uh, but he actually has Asperger's. And so this book um, basically is his story about um, his journey with Asperger's. And it says on the back, um, in a world that didn't understand him, it would take a magical relationship with a kestrel for a young boy to learn the lessons of love, life, 
death and acceptance and this is the choice for April for the bookish mamas book club that I helped to run with two other ladies again if you're interested I will leave um, a link in the description box down below I'm not a massive memoir reader but I do think that this sounds very very interesting um so yeah I'm looking forward to picking this one up next up we have children of blood and bone by Tomi Adeyemi if you have been around booktube or bookstagram or anything book related just recently then you'll no doubt have heard about this book it was released um, in the UK earlier this month and it has been very well received from everything that I have read. It's basically a YA book set in North Africa and I have tried to remain as spoiler free as possible. I've just, I'll just read you what it says on the back. Um, they killed my mother, they took our magic, they tried to bury us, now we rise. Um, yeah and I'm trying to go into it as blind as possible other than just to know that people have been absolutely raving about this book and I'm very much looking forward to reading it. Next up we have Ashes of London by Andrew Taylor and I bought this book because a couple of weeks ago James was really struggling to know what to read. He is basically suffering with his first book hangover thanks to The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. If you don't know Brandon Sanderson is an epic fantasy writer and Way of Kings is a series that is going to consist of 10 books but because each book is so big it's actually split in half and so it will be a series of 20 books of which I think he's written three or six three books so six books in total and James is just completely obsessed with it he listens to podcasts he talks about it all the time but he is suffering with uh, a bit of a book hangover having finished the last book that has been released and so we were talking about what he was going to read and I picked this one up simply because it was compared to uh, CJ Sansom's Shard Lake series which is one of our all-time favourite historical mystery series. I've got the books on the shelf here just behind me we absolutely adore this and this is supposedly very very similar so it's set in 1666 around the time of the great fire of london and it's about a young man who is forced to hunt for a murderer and bodies keep turning up around london and he is the son of a traitor um yeah and he's basically forced to go and find out who is killing these people so just really looking forward to it if it is anything like cj sansom's books then i think that this is going to be a firm favorite for the for the both of us then we have a trilogy by ray carson this is the girl of fire and thorns so we have the first book the girl of fire and thorns followed by, by the crown of embers and then thirdly the conclusion to the trilogy is bitter kingdom and i don't know much about this other than um reagan from peru's project talks about ray carson books a lot and i think that this was the first series that she wrote um i basically know that it's about a young girl and i think she has magic um, and when she's 16 she's forced to marry a very powerful king and the story kind of unfolds from there and that's that's quite vague but because it's a ya fantasy i'm quite happy to go in as blind as possible but yeah i I've heard good things not just from Reagan but from other booktubers about Ray Carson's writing so I wanted to dip my toe into her writing and start with the first trilogy that she wrote so I picked this up on Book Depository and Book Depository books take absolutely ages to come so I've been waiting for over a month I think for all three books so now that I have them again I think that this is one that James might enjoy reading um, and I will definitely get to at some point this year and the final book that I picked up I picked up second hand I spotted it in a charity shop and snatched it up because I've been looking for this series for quite a while this is Rivers of London by Baron Aronovich and I don't know much about it I believe that it is kind of a magical realism story set in London um, I think that it has crime and mystery involved but I know that it's part of a series of books and I haven't heard that many people talk about it on booktube I think that it might be quite a few years old but I constantly see it um in bookshops and I'm constantly drawn to the cover so I just saw it for a pound in a charity shop and I thought that I would pick it up and give the first one a go and see what I thought okay and then finally I've got three books which were all sent to me by publishers and which are all being released in the UK at least in April this year so first up we have Starfish by Akemi Dawn Bowman. This is the author's debut novel and I don't know that much about it but I believe it's a YA about a young girl who is half Japanese, half American I think and um, she has long dreamed of getting into an art school called Prism and then unfortunately she doesn't get into this art school at the same time as 
um, her uncle moves back home and I think that he is slightly abusive or he causes issues within the family. So when she is given the opportunity to go and tour um, some art schools with her childhood friend, she jumps at the chance. And I think that this is very much a coming of age story, just of our protagonist um, leaving the family home and finding out who she really is. And I've heard very, very good things about this book, so I'm very excited to read it. Next up we have The Gloaming by Kirsty Logan. Kirsty Logan was the author of The Grace Keepers which I read and really enjoyed I think it was last year or possibly the year before but this is her new release and I'm just going to read you what it says um, in the first paragraph on the inside flap uh, Mara's island is one of stories and magic but every story ends in the same way she will finish her days on the cliff turned to stone and gazing out at the horizon like all the islanders before her the gloaming is a gorgeous tale of love and grief and the gap between fairy tales and real life so very much looking forward to picking this one up. And then the final book that I'm going to share with you is Dear Mrs. Bird by A.J. Pierce. This is set in 1940 and is about a young woman who dreams of becoming a lady war correspondent. And I believe that she applies for a job but ends up basically being the newspaper's agony aunt, Mrs. Bird. Um, and I think that all kinds of things ensue from there based on her responses to the letters that she receives. Again, this is a book that I requested because I have seen people absolutely raving about it and I'm very very excited to read it. I love anything set during this particular period in history and I just think that it's going to be a really different and interesting take particularly given that I don't think that um, our protagonist answers the agony ant letters in quite the way that she is expected to. So another one that I'm hoping that I get to really soon um, and I hope that it is as good as I think it's going to be. So there you go that is my most recent book haul. Do let me know in the comments down below if you've read any of the books that I've hauled and what you thought of them or just let me know what you are currently reading. I always love to know. Please don't forget to give me the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more content if you have enjoyed this video. Thank you as always for watching and I will see you all soon.